Are you interested in bioinformatics and eager to find out the different career paths you can take? Well, in today's video, I'll be unveiling the complete roadmap of bioinformatics career paths. I'll be diving into both academia and industry routes. So stay tuned as we discuss the different roles you might come across on your journey to becoming a bioinformatics professional. Just before we get into the video, if you want to download a copy of the roadmap for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description and you can just click that. I'll send it to you for free. So I'm going to take you through this diagram today. This is a, a diagram just thrown together which kind of just illustrates some of the career paths which can be expected in the bioinformatics sphere. So this is my interpretation of how I see it. Obviously there are many different labels that you can give for certain job roles or job titles but I've just gone with what I think is like the main job title and job roles. So this diagram is split into three sections. You've got the education section in yellow and then industry in blue and academia in red. This just illustrates different career paths you can take. Um, it's kind of just my interpretation of how I, how I see it. Obviously there are gonna be people with different opinions, but I think this gives a general overview of how it looks. And I've also kind of tried to show how you can transfer between different roles. So whether that's like in industry and academia or like moving back to ed education, I've tried to illustrate how I think you can kind of navigate this bioinformatics career roadmap. So let's start at the top, let's start with education section. So getting started in bioinformatics, you're gonna need a degree of some sort. Now, the kind of common path is bachelor's, master's and PhD. However, not everyone does all three. So some people might do the bachelor's, skip the master's and go straight to the PhD. Um, some people may, you know, just have the bachelor's, they may leave the education system there, they may leave at the master stage or at the PhD stage. So this is kind of obvious, but I'm just going to kind of take you through some standard paths you can take. So bachelor's, master's, PhD, if you're going to go down the uh, academic route, after a PhD, you can take a postdoc. So, so this position allows you to gain additional research experience, develop new skills and establish a uh, publication record. Now, after your postdoc, you can become a staff scientist or a research scientist. There are different names for this. Um, and this is, again, a position in a university where you're going to be focusing on conducting research. So this role may not have teaching responsibilities, or it may, but uh, the teaching responsibilities, that's more, uh, that's more, you find those more in the professor type roles. So another direction you can go after your postdoc is to go down the professor route. So the assistant professor position is a entry level professorship position at university. So it involves things like research, teaching um, and other services. Now, this position may lead to a tenured position after a successful tenure interview process. So for those of you who don't know, tenureship is a status in higher education that provides job security and academic freedom to faculty members. So staff will go through a rigorous evaluation process. Uh, based on teaching, research, and service con contributions to the institution. And if deemed fit, they'll get given a tenureship, which means they cannot be fired. So they're given, well, they can obviously be fired if they do something like outrageous, but they're generally given like the freedom to conduct their research without the fear of losing their job. Now, the next step after assistant professor is associate professor. So this is again a tenured position. This is like a mid-level professorship at a university, again, involving research, teaching, and other services. After that, we go on to the full professor. So this is a senior level professorship at a university. It involves a similar kind of thing, but just with more responsibility. Um, full, prof full professors will often have um, stronger reputations and influence within the field. Now, after that, there are some other kind of steps up I would say. However, these aren't really the focus of most people, I would imagine. Now, I imagine most of my audience is going to be younger people. In fact, I can confirm that through the YouTube analytics. Um, but I just included these to kind of give you an idea of what is above like the professor position. So the department head chair, this is like a leadership position within an academic department. And that will involve like overseeing faculty, staff and resources, as well as the general strategic 
direction of the department. Now the dean slash director position is like a higher level administration position, um, which involves overseeing like a whole university research center as well as managing like budgets, faculty and staff. And then the provost slash vice president of research. This is a like an executive position within the university. So this is like overseeing all research activities, ensuring research compliance and kind of setting the priorities and strategies again for the for the university. And I guess there is like one step above that, which would be the university president or chancellor, which is like the highest administrative administrative position within university. And that's kind of like responsible for everything. But I just included those just to so see you're aware. But let's ha now have a look at the industry route. So um, the industry route starts, and again, there's many different names for certain job titles. You can just have bioinformatics scientist, scientists, bioinformatics analyst, um, and there are probably hundreds, well, not hundreds, but there are probably like quite a few more which could be could fit into this category. But just for simplicity, it's like any kind of junior role in industry. That's that's what this represents. So a lot of people will. will join industry after getting their PhD, some after their masters and some even just after their bachelors, that's a lot more rare. And also you can obviously transfer between academia and industry, uh, but I'll go over that in a second. We'll just go through this path first. So first is like a, a junior position or so like a bioinformatics scientist or analyst. Um, and here, you know, there's lots of different things you could be doing in industry, but basically it's like the most junior level or maybe like a mid level, depending on how much experience you have. Um, doing you know what a bioinformatics scientist does whatever that may be in a certain scenario so after that you can go up to more senior positions so senior bioinformatics scientist slash analyst these people will generally have more oversight so they might be leading teams and leading the the junior scientists they may also be responsible for managing projects um, ensuring deadlines are met and generally more kind of leadership compared to the the junior position. So the next step is the the senior level. So I put principal bioinformatics scientist slash group leader. So this position might be involved in leading a group of bioinformatics scientists. So the senior and, and junior bioinformatics scientists, they could be involved in you know setting performance objectives, uh, mentoring team members, and overall guiding the execution of projects. Now one step above that is the director level so up a director of bioinformatics so this this role is more managerial so at this point you're kind of you might be overseeing the whole department of bioinformatics so you might be you know developing strategies you might be involved in resource allocation um, you might be have a more of a say in like the hiring decisions but yeah this is this is a lot more of a higher level position where you can you'd probably be working with the heads of other departments um, and generally like managing the goals and direction of the organization. So then one step above that, I've got the VP of bioinformatics slash, slash CSO. So VP, vice president, CSO, chief scientific officer. So again, this is an even higher level of management. So VP might be responsible for setting the overall vision um, and direction of a bioinformatics division and kind of work with other high level execs to you know, focus on strategy and broader organizational goals and a similar thing for CSO um, but CSO I guess is higher than the VP of bioinformatics in the sense that you're you're providing scientific leadership for the whole company not just you know that department okay so that's a general overview of the the path you can take um, but I've also drawn many lines like between things. So the black lines are, are meant to represent more common paths. So bachelor's to master's to PhD or bachelor's to PhD, very common. And then we've got some light gray lines as well. So the right, light gray lines I've used to represent you know, transitions you can make that are perhaps less uh, common. Now this is just my personal opinion and I'm sure there will be people who disagree. Um, this is just what I've seen, but I'm just going to take you through it. So I'll take you through my journey. So what I did, I, I went from the bachelor's to the master's, and then I went to a research associate position in academia. 
and then I transferred to a bioinformatics scientist position in industry. So I'm currently like here, my path is like this. So you can actually, you know, transition back into the education. So let's say you, you have your master's and then you go into a lab and as like a research assistant, and then you decide, okay, I want to go back and do my PhD. That's like quite common as well, I'd say. And then in terms of transitioning from industry to academia or vice versa, I think it's fairly common as well for a postdoc to transfer to industry. Um, I don't really see it the other way around that much. However, again, that's just personal. That's just what I've seen personally. I don't really see that, but I'm sure that is a transition that some people might do. Also, you could transfer from a postdoc straight into a more senior position because, and again, it depends on how many years experience you have, but let's say you're a postdoc with five years postdoc experience and a lot of knowledge in a specific domain, then I would probably say it's more likely if you transfer, transfer to industry, it's more likely you'd, you'd go into either a senior position or potentially even higher into like a group leader kind of role. And again, it depends on the size of the company. Like I can imagine in a, in a startup, a postdoc with a lot of experience may go straight into a role that has more responsibility. I've included like the transition from staff scientist to you know bioinformatics scientist. I put it in a darker grey and the only reason it's in darker grey is because when it was in lighter grey the lines kind of cross you can really see where it was coming from so that's the only reason it's in a darker grey. But I feel that that's a transition you know from a staff scientist again depending on how many years experience you have um, going from you know a scientist straight into a, bi uh, a se more senior bioinformatics role. Now something I haven't included on here which I think is common, well not common but it happens is that people in academia, so let's say professors or anyone who's kind of experienced and especially in a niche field like on the cutting edge of research, they may start their own company, so start a startup. So that's something you hear about, or at least I hear about from time to time I haven't included it here but I guess that would be I guess that would be like professor to CEO or I'm not sure how that would work but that's something which is possible as well but again I imagine a lot of my viewers are going to be in this stage I imagine a lot of you will be thinking okay what can I do after my PhD or what can I do after my bachelor's or master's and um, I've, I've talked about this before but let me just give my two cents on what I think and again I'm biased here I'm just going to tell you what I did and why I did it but I found that after my master's, I was more competitive for roles in academia than I was in industry. So that's kind of why I went into academia to begin with um, and then gained you know, a bit of experience. And then I, that allowed me to move into industry. So I hope that gives you a general overview of what's possible. And um, as I mentioned, if you want to get this um, roadmap, just click the link in the description. I'll send it to you. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you found that valuable. If you did, leave a like and I'll see you in the next video.